You're listening to the Devil Dog Talk Show. This show contains explicit material and is recommended for ages 18 and older for mature audiences only. But hey, it's the internet. Today we have Dynasty Electric. And I think it's I. It's Jenny and Seth. Jenny and Seth. We have Jenny and Seth on from Dynasty Electric. A, 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 just a great. I don't know how to actually say it. Just musicians? Would you say musicians? Okay, great. Solid. Like a group. Musicians and, and sound healers, too. Sound healers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's something that, I, again, like I'm, this is a new, a very fresh conversation for me. Very new type of you know orientation. I never heard of sound healing. Uh, you brought up chakras and in, 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 you see the stutter. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> Because it's new to me. Uh, I had a few guests on that we discuss, of course, healing in general, the integration of psychedelic medications, uh, integration of plant-based medicines, all these great concepts. But then and then I got this and I'm looking at it and I'm going, what is sound? What is a sound bath? That's dope. I've never taken a bath in sound. And then I was watching the videos and I was watching, of course, the instrumentation the equipment like we brought up with the Sennheiser and I was like, Hey, this is very well produced. Like, um, and then of course I go back to the notes and I'm like, Oh no, they've had music in movies, TV commercial. So you're not just coming at this as, you know, uh, a YouTube channel. It's not just, you know, uh, sound healing. You guys are professionals in the industry of creating art and music. So that was really exciting for me to see, and I'm just excited to have you guys on. So Jenny and Seth from Dynasty Electric, and they're going to break down some very interesting points of what they have going on on their YouTube channel, what they have available for events. And it's very, uh, very. just keep your mind open because I was listening to it right before the show. I was doing a little bit of exercise and I was playing your guys' recent songs. And forgive me, I can't remember the title of the album. Uh, but I'll let you guys promote the hell out of it. How about that? And I was listening to it and I was just like, wow, this is Zen AF. I think I can say that on, you know, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I think the youth will allow it. Right. And it just brought me into, so. yeah. yeah, it brought me into a comfort zone. I was like, okay, let me just have a conversation with these folks and see what they got going on. So I'll turn it over to you, Jenny and Seth. And if you'd both like to do a little brief introduction of yourselves and then also as the the group, that'd be great. Well, we first met many years ago in New York City and we were both musicians at the time. And so we we started up a, a rock band in Williamsburg in Brooklyn back around 2005. And so we were playing uh, at loft parties and at bars and festivals. And we even had our own loft where we would throw parties in Brooklyn. And they were just really ecstatic affairs where we would, uh, on Friday nights or Saturday nights, we could have a few hundred people in our place and we'd have bands playing and DJs and uh, just the lighting and video projections and people dancing and just having a great time. And, and during that time, you know, we always really felt like music was uh, inherently healing. Because, uh, you know, even electronic music and rock and hip hop, that you can release a lot of energy and you can actually attune yourself to a certain vibration that can be super uplifting. And so, you know, you put on a, your favorite song and it immediately lifts up your spirit and you feel like dancing or talking or just uh, just improves your mood in general. And so we always knew that uh, music had this uh, quality. And then in around 2012, we met uh, our first person we met who was a professional sound healer, energy healer. And she was very specifically using sound as a kind of medicine to help people from otherwise really difficult conditions like MS or uh, addiction or uh, cancers, very difficult conditions that regular doctors really didn't know how to deal with, that she ended up with a lot of successful uh, cases where using her shamanic techniques and using her music, she was actually having these really amazing results. And so seeing what she was doing with music and sound uh, really started us on, on this journey. That's awesome. That is really cool because the, uh, I, I'm not going to say it was the grunge scene. I think it was the grunge scene was a little bit over by 05, but the, the I think it's called industrial rock, right? Around, around that time. 
Yeah, we were doing electronic rock. So like fusing, um, it was like early days of EDM and like indie rock bands like the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs and TV on the radio were popular in Brooklyn at the time. Uh, and we just had our own scene going on where there was all these great musicians and bands. It was actually a really exciting period. But, you know, uh, uh, it was actually when we found sound healing, it was like at, at the perfect juncture in our life where it we really felt like after having lived in Brooklyn and done the the loft party scene for many years that to move into all of a sudden doing sound healing music, which is more about you know, being Zen and relaxing, meditating. Uh, it's usually more performed in yoga studios. Just was like a really um, healing and refreshing uh, transition for us. And just kind of happened organically too. Uh, it wasn't like we were just like, oh, we're not going to, DJ parties anymore or play parties anymore. In fact, we still do occasionally. It was more just like, oh, we just got into this other cool side of music. And then we were able to bring all those production skills that we had learned from DJing and electronic music uh, to our sound healing practice. And so just like you were saying um, uh, that you noticed that there was a lot of production in the music uh, and in the videos. So yeah, we were just able to sort of translate those those are skills and abilities we had learned earlier into this new field. That's awesome. That is, that is awesome. That is exciting. Uh, so Jenny, well, you, go ahead. Yeah, it looks like you wanted to say, say something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what's, what I feel is unique about our sound bath, because, you know, there's a lot of sound healers offering um different types of experiences, but predominantly they are using crystal bowls and chimes and gongs and didgeridoos and other instruments. And I feel like what we're doing that's very unique is we are creating these uh, soundscapes and these different tones and recording frequencies in nature and just kind of blending that all together to create this journey. And I know you had mentioned before, um, you know, talking about different uh, psychedelic healing properties and things like that. I always like that. Um, how Seth describes it, that the sound bath is really an opportunity to embark on almost like a psychedelic journey, but without ingesting any substances and no side effects. It's simply just, you know, the vibration of the music and the idea that we are all vibrational beings in a vibrational world. And that being around this, um, you know, harmonious vibration and being involved in this sound journey, um, literally the fields of your body start to entrain to this vibration. That is so cool. That's a very interesting way of kind of explaining is existence as a whole, right? The beginning, middle of end, the big bang, you know, I was watching this crazy thing about string theory and quarks and quantum theory and uh, just the macro and micro aspects of existence. When you look at it, like you were saying, they're very much just vibration based, right? Frequency based and, you know, the colors are different frequencies of vision and light, et cetera. And the human mind or the human body, I, I should say the human body can only absorb, see, process a, a very finite realm of, of both audio and visual, uh, electrical, I think is another aspect of that, but you know, that's, that's, I think that's your guys' side of the world a little better than me. Um, but the visual, I can't remember the spectrum, the audio, I remember it's 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, right? Yeah. And integrating the different, the instrumentation that you have, like you were saying, a lot of people bring, I don't want to say the, the 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 typical or stereotypical instrumentation, didgeridoos, and drums, <laughs> drums, you know, the drum circles, everybody's seen them, uh, the crystal, like, uh, I honestly don't want to make fun of it, but I don't know what they're called. I, I call them the big giant candle holders. They look, they look like a tube and like it would be a perfect spot to fill with water and put some like little can, it would be adorable, right? And, uh... So I really dived off of the integration of visual and I saw in one of your videos, you had a, a, just a large room of people in, enjoying the experience. And then there was the visual aspect being projected on the ceiling. And, oh, faux pas. I hit the microphone and the ceiling had, you know, the projected image. Uh, there was like geometry going on, some really beautiful landscape type of stuff. And then just the musical instrumentation behind it and the quality of the sound. I was like, 
dude, this is vibes. This is really cool. I, I dig this. So to build on that a little bit more, what is a sound bath? So sound bath really is a kind of a concert experience, but rather than like the conventional experience where you're watching a performer on a stage and you're directing your visual and uh, your audio senses towards that musician on the stage, instead you're actually laying down and closing your eyes and having an internal experience. So it's not about the so much about the musicians or the crowd or the even the the visual effects that might be happening on the stage. It really becomes more about uh, just really just being uh, bathed in those uh, sonic vibrations, allowing them to because sound you know sound really has this unique ability to just penetrate every layer of our being. Like it goes into our bones and into our blood and into our mind. Uh, and so when the sound is really harmonic and at a certain frequency, it can really get in there really deep and, and create a really, uh, really deep level of relaxation. And then when you have your eyes closed and you're just going, just sort of melting into the experience, people have all kinds of uh, dreamlike, visionary kinds of experiences because you're entering into that zone right in between being asleep and being awake. Uh, so that you, you really are hitting kind of that sweet spot for having these kind of very vivid um, kinds of experiences internally. Um, but really ultimately it is still a, a, a form of a concert, but rather than being for getting, you know, dancing or uh, whatnot, it would be for relaxing and meditating. Okay. that That's actually really cool. Uh, coming from, from a personal perspective, I am a music junkie. Uh, ever since I was a kid, it doesn't matter what it was. My dad used to get me the uh, the mailer CDs, and I'd little fill it out for a penny. You get like oh, yeah. ten CDs, and you know all that great stuff. And I just would love just consuming music, and it's still my thing today. And <laughs> to be honest with you, in such a way where when when I was listening to Jenny sing, I was like, hold hold on, this isn't just like you know, somebody out there humming and, you know, doing a little bit of tone work or, you know, fo, sol, la, ti, do, all the, the note thing. I'm not a singer. Don't hate me. <laughs> but it was very good. And I was like, wow, it, it, it was captivating the tonality, you know, just, just coming as a music listener. I was very impressed and blown away. And then after the, I would say the clinical head, you know, that, that uh, outer shell of digesting material, right? As soon as that lifted up, I was just happy and I was relaxing. And I was like, bro, this is, this is nice. This is something that if without, of course, I utilize cannabis, other people utilize other things, that without that, this would give me a space, at least a moment. I could definitely see myself vibing out in the truck. Like say I have a meeting, or in between class, like I'm getting started to going to do, or, you know, just having a stressful day, playing this for a little bit and digesting the world, digesting those internal thoughts, like you were saying, that introspective experience, while also having a, a, a external experience of vibes, right? Music, energy, frequency, uh, artistry, because you guys bring a level of artistic vision into your sound space where I was like, okay, well, what, what's next? And the way that you do, what I really enjoyed was the way that you do your your notes. They're not just they're not just being sung; they're being felt. And I, it reminded me more of kind of the Who. I don't know if you've heard that rock band. Super, oh yeah, super yeah, super heavy, <laughs> right? Super awesome. Where the the throat singing just kind of takes you to a different place, and I was mm -hmm. totally enjoying it. So Jenny, what is your experience uh, on singing? Because clearly you, guys, you both have a music uh, industry history, a great experience, both just industry standard equipment and production value. But what is, as far as singing, what type of experiences have you had with that? Well, really the singing for the sound bath and also what we call Pleiadian sound healing. It's just a series of like vocalizations with you know, the soundscapes. And actually we've been sometimes playing the crystal bowls with like um, uh, effects on them, like using effects pedals and things like this. But in terms of the vocals, 
it's usually just improvised. So I'll hear a sound set escape that Seth has created and just some kind of melody, you know, comes to my awareness. And that's usually the best, whatever I just feel. A lot of the time for the sound baths, you know, we're not rehearsing ahead of time what I'm going to sing. I'm usually just singing whatever comes in the moment. You know, of course, in, in that sense, it's not like you rehearse something for three months and then all of a sudden you're going to the recording. There's a very um, um, free sort of energy to it. But I think that's a lot of what uh, people are really feeling and dialing into um, the improvisational aspect. And actually, we've been Im improvising for many years. I met Seth and he was doing improvisational jazz at first and like touring all over Europe. and. I remember when he first asked me actually to play bass, I was playing bass in one of his improvised jazz bands with like a violin bow. But I remember when he first asked me to do it, I would ask, well, what are we playing exactly? And he would say, well, whatever you feel. And to me, that was just like completely horrifying because I was used <laughs> to just like really learning everything and knowing ahead of time. And it's kind of like improvisational theater in a way. If you can get past that fear of just in the moment saying or singing whatever comes into your awareness. And I think some really powerful things can come through. But it took me a minute to get used to the idea of just not playing something verbatim or rehearsing it ahead of time or just knowing what I was going to sing. But really that opened up. I think a lot of channels to some of the pop music that we created, like our album Golden Arrows with we did with Ski Beats was really just, you know, we were at this house in Woodstock, New York, and really it was just a lot of we, we meditated a lot. We sang mantras and then just stuff came to me when I would hear Seth's music or Ski's uh, beats he was creating. And really, that's the ultimate when you can hear some music. And then just the lyrics and the melodies just come through. That is beautiful. Like as an artist, and uh, I'm not saying that I don't understand. I was in jazz band when I was a kid, you know, marching band and jazz band. Played the trombone, second chair people, good times. But the improvisational, <laughs> improvisational jazz, okay. And I bring up Frank Zappa a lot because the, right and that's that's the that's the thing that a lot of people go well he wasn't jazz i'm like but wasn't he <laughs> the, oh, the, 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 the 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 improvisational side of the way he not only learned uh guitar by himself the way he brought up music lyrics when you really deep dive into his book he had a great book where it, it, it was an improvised book it was based off of an interview with him Right. So listening to you, Jenny, about finally being able to uh, relinquish those barriers to creativeness. Right. And just enjoy the 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 truth of the moment. Right. The the, the words will come to you. The notes will come to you. A lot of artists will uh, singers will start humming the tones like, oh, I feel like this. And then the words come later. And that's just a beautiful way to kind of break down music in general. So when you were in Woodstock during that that time, did you have the sensation of freedom? How did that feel to finally realize that, hey, this is the thing that I've been looking for? Was it the thing you were looking for as an artist? Uh, how did that develop into uh, elect uh, Dynasty Electric? And how did we get to that point? Well, there wasn't even really much thought, you know, it was just like a free flow. We were just enjoying ourselves at this like house in the forest. And so, you know, ideas were just coming through. So I wasn't really thinking about it, but I will say this, like the first verse and the chorus and all that just comes through, but then you got to sit and write like the other parts of it. And sometimes that's more where you're, you know, thinking about it or bringing different ideas to the table. Um, you were going to say something, Seth? Well, you know, I really do think there's something special about certain environments. And so, like, you know, uh, one of the reasons a lot of musicians uh, have worked in Woodstock over the years is there's just something about the environment there that it, I remember when we were in this house that it felt as a musician to me like you were just sort of casting your line out into this, the ether and reeling back in ideas. And that's because it was because you have that kind of quiet and that mountain air and like, just that space to be away from the city and all that influence of sound in the city. I think that's a big part of it. 
But I really think that that's um, there's a reason uh, that artists have flocked to that area historically, and a lot of records and recording studios are based up there. It it really did have a just a magical feeling, and uh, when when the producer said, "Oh, do you, should we rent a house in Woodstock?" We were like, "Absolutely!" And it really actually was like this amazing experience. That's beautiful. Still, and it was like twelve years ago. It's still like very much with us today, even. That is beautiful. I love that you're bringing that up because I've I've had a recent experience with um, a gentleman out here, Dusk Bennett. He's a, a really, really, really great, amazing audio engineer, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be talking to him about y'all quite a bit because the environment that you're talking about, where I live, is it's called Valley Center. Okay, so it's a very a rural area in the in the East County north northeast San Diego County by uh, SoCal Harrah's, which is a big casino. Everybody has heard of them. Uh, a lot of people come out. They do comedy shows. Great musicians. Uh, the uh, Belushi and Aqua did the Blues Brothers things a few years ago out here, and you know it's just a great thing out there at Harrah's. Well, this gentleman created just a wonderful studio to come in and create amazing music. And I was blessed to meet him and for the past few months, build a relationship on developing great, amazing music and seeing that space and being in the right space and having that, I want to say uninhibited, uh, creational freedom, right? You know, the vibe of a surrounding area in, in, in just any world, I think any place, you know, in, in, in the ether, like you said, it just, it helps. Right. And then I love that casting your, casting your line out and just reeling in ideas and doing, and I've seen that happen there. So I'm like really, really vibing with that whole Woodstock and getting a good space and, you know, going out. And of course I've heard of things like death leopard, you know, uh, doing lock-ins and private, uh, NDA, uh, studios, all it, it, like non like all this stuff's involved. I'm like, you know, it's a really cool, once you get through all of that, right. It's really amazing that you are still able to bring just a pure and genuine sound and experience to it. So to move a little bit forward, when you're creating the YouTube channel, how long have you been doing the YouTube channel and how long have you been creating music specifically for sound bath experiences and vibrational healing or sound healing? We were always uh, on YouTube. Okay. Um, since the early days, but we were primarily a since live band. Since the dawn of time in YouTube. <laughs> Actually, since I'm probably, oh, yeah, I mean, around the start of YouTube. But uh, nice. we never really, we weren't really active YouTubers uh, at first. We would make a music video. We'd do like maybe one or two music videos a year, you know, and then we'd, so we weren't really actively engaged in our channel uh, until the pandemic where we had been performing live. We had always been a live band primarily, and YouTube was always just sort of our side project. And when we um, we were in Los Angeles doing a weekly residency, and then just all of a sudden everything closed down. And so we went up to our, we actually, our mountain cabin was just outside of LA in this little town called Crestline. And so we had, uh, we, we set up a recording studio there and we started broadcasting. We actually started off on Zoom and on Facebook and then, we just uh, settled into YouTube. We just found it to be the best suited for what we were up to of recording these live sound baths and wanting to broadcast them. And it's actually, it's really been a great thing because if we had always been caught up in just performing live, I'm not sure if we would have gotten to do the YouTube experience uh, fully like we ended up doing. And we've just been able to connect with so many people from around the world through it that I've really, it's been a, a blessing in disguise uh, that, even though it was precipitated by, you know, this emergency of having to go online that we've just ended up continuing to do it because it's just been, we get such nice feedback from people. And rather than just helping people in LA, we're now able to reach out with people all over the country and the world. That's awesome. And to bring it back, where are you based out of? Yeah, I was going to mention that when we were talking about recording in certain spaces. Um, so we were both from Massachusetts, but last summer we came up to Nova Scotia to look for um, a property near the ocean Gorgeous. To, to purchase for a retreat center and artist residency. So really now we're in this like gorgeous 
a uh, very quiet spot on the eastern shore in Nova Scotia, Seal Harbor. We call it Seal Harbor Sanctuary. And we've been setting it up for the last few months, doing some renovations um, to create a retreat center and artist residency for people who want to come here and recharge, uh, rejuvenate, but also create art and music. That is awesome. So that's in Nova Scotia. That is beautiful. Yeah, my great grandfather was from here, not this part of Nova Scotia, a different part, but that's how we became interested. So a lot of people from the Massachusetts area that I'm from, um, you know, all have a desire to come up here and, and experience Nova Scotia. There's definitely this like mystique that it's a very uh, mystical place. And what's so cool is that we're right on the ocean, but there's also this incredible forest around the property too. That is beautiful. Uh, coming from a kid from uh, Northern California, right? So just north of San Francisco, gorgeous forest, gig- gigantic trees, right? Yeah. Right right against the, the, the coast there too. I could just imagine how beautiful it is. I've I've looked at property in Nova Scotia. I'm not going to lie. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, well, you know, it's yeah. so... I don't hear many West Coasters say that. I have a lot of interests in... In, in in genuine uh, northern New York, uh, Maine, mm-hmm. uh, the inlet of the there's a lake between uh, some Canadian area and then the United States. It's like just like a three mile gap. I was looking at that and I was telling the wife, I was like, there's houses on the coast like mm-hmm. in California. There's millions of dollars Like you can get land and all this stuff. And before I, I drab on, it looks like Seth had something to say. But I have found some great, beautiful places in Nova Scotia. And I I'm I don't know how to get into ca- Canadian stuff, but it is just a gorgeous <laughs> place. Uh, of course, uh, the trailer park boys like <laughs> watching that and, and hearing about all the different regions in Canada. The o- Oak Island. What's so interesting about Oak Island is like there's literally gold all over this entire peninsula. Nova Scotia is just filled with gold everywhere. Oh, wow. Wow. That would be so gnarly to just go. My, me and my boys like panning. So that's one of the, like, you we, can pan up you here pan for up. sure. <laughs> we should have a panning retreat, a panning for gold retreat, I guess. Right. Guys- <laughs> that would be so fun. I'll bring the kids. Oh my God. The whole and family. actually we have a little beach on our property. So our, uh, our family was visiting last week and our little uh, nephew, he brought his metal detector and they were finding, there used to be a boat dock down there. So they were finding all kinds of like little, like ornaments that had fallen off of a boat or, little boat things uh it was it was really fun for them um but you know i was going to say about nova scotia one of the things that's been a nice uh nice thing about up here is there's actually a great cannabis culture in canada and in nova scotia in general that uh because cannabis is legal on a federal level here in, in canada uh just the the ease of purchasing and um using cannabis is just another level of um it's just available in the liquor store oh, in really? Canada. Yeah. And uh, you have to only be 19. So they don't even check IDs typically. Uh, and it's also available by a mail order. So Canada Post will just bring it to your mailbox. That is, And you can order from dope. British Columbia. You can get West Coast uh, bud here on the East Coast. And the East Coast, like there's great um, cultivators here too. So actually a very vibrant cannabis culture is a nice, nice aspect of being here. I know That's Zoe gorgeous. wants us to do some cannabis retreats up here. And also Seth makes this incredible cannabis drink um, called Bang. It's actually from like thousands of years ago, like Shiva devotees in India would drink it, but it's made with milk. You're just infusing can- uh, the milk with the cannabis. Uh, in, it's, um, it's just a delightful drink. It's What's great about it is, is that it uh, you have like a longer duration of the effect so that like other edibles, but it's really particularly great for uh, nighttime use. Get that full night's sleep, uh, you know, get more of like a six to eight hour experience in. So, I, yeah, I really love it. That is awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm actually a huge advocate for the cannabis culture. Um, that's I, I cut my teeth, I should say, uh, into the cannabis advocacy culture back in 2015 heavily. 
at the Cannabis Cup in Denver, Colorado. I met this nice. wonderful lady, uh, Sue Sisley, did a, a great interview with her and all the different advocates and industry uh, persons that were there. It was for a cannabis expo at, at the Crown Royal. And then, of course, I went to the Cannabis Cup, got to meet Super Troopers, all those great guys. And you're right, the cannabis culture is very diverse in, in an experience for sure for purchasing alone. In the United States, it's just... It's a headache. It really is. It's a headache. There's still a lot of stigma attached to it. So you bringing up Nova Scotia and that, I'm like, you know, I'm going to have to revisit this idea here, <laughs> this property idea here, because just being able to go down, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get an outstand over the uh, the Quickie Mart. I'll be right back. Right? Like, <laughs> exactly. Me and well, Seth. Seth calls it, <laughs> he calls it the Wild East out here. It's the Wild Wild East of oh, Canada. Nice. <laughs> that is awesome. So integrating cannabis into the, 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 the soundscape, or I should say the development of of what Ele- uh, Dynasty Electric is, uh, clearly, you know, I'm I'm always happy to discuss cannabis, but I really want to focus in on, of course, the music because the instrumentation. I want to go back to the instrumentation a bit, Jenny and Seth. On how do you select an instrument, and in what type of frequency range do your instruments hit? Is, or is the healing specific to ranges, or how does that go about? Can you can you expand a bit on that? Well, the, the the seven chakra bowls that we use, each frequency corresponds to one of the seven chakras. And I know you were talking about chakras at the top of the program. That another word for chakra would just be a basically energy center. And if you think about the major energy centers in our central nervous system, you think about you know the heart, the brain, the stomach, the base of the spine. That these major energy centers are what in uh, Hindu and yogic philosophy are known as chakras. And they are spinning wheels of energy at these central points. So right at the base of the spine, uh, right in your stomach, your heart, your mind, and at the crown of your head, that by balancing uh, each of these energy centers, you're able to create optimal health and well-being. And so uh, each of these bowls corresponds to one of these centers. And so depending on the music we're playing, it could actually potentially either have a grounding effect or it could have a more a kind of uh, uh, elevating effect if, if it's in the upper chakras or more of an imagination uh, stimulating effect, or it could be more of a heart healing effect. Uh, these different tones and how we uh, sculpt them together and play with them can, can really influence these different aspects of the nervous system. Now, do you find that certain frequency ranges elicit specific responses to different energy centers or chakras? Like, like say the I think there's the the B makes a specific frequency. I have heard of that one, where the B's flutter of the wings is a specific frequency, and that frequency he, is healing. And I'm like, oh, okay, like I I whew, right over the top of my melon, right? But do you find that there is a specific frequency range for specific sh- chakras or is there just kind of a full bodied experience and then it has to work through one or how do we go about actually massaging those different chakras with the b- music and vibration? What's like, what is that go? What, what is that? <laughs> Before- well, you know, I really, it's actually, it's interesting to ask because ultimately I really believe that frequency, all frequency is potentially useful in some way that uh, it's really the intention of both the sound healer and the musician and also of the receiver and the the listener that, for example, if if the sound healer tells the listener that they're going to be working on their root chakra and grounding, and then they play the note C, which would, uh, this kind of gives us like a, for example, a roadmap that C corresponds to the root chakra. It gives us like a, a, some kind of roadmap to work with, with these esoteric chakras but you know, I could play C and it could also heal your heart as well. But if I say we're gonna work on um, on grounding and on the root chakra, and then the listener also has that intention of, oh, I'm going to listen to this music and meditate on, on grounding myself and feeling that uh, balance of my root chakra, that those intentions actually um, are really critical uh, to, to the effect that the listener may have. 
But in the end, uh, the listener can benefit really from uh, any of the different frequencies that might be played. And if they have a different intention, if say they need to heal from a trauma or they need to heal from a physical injury, they could potentially just with that intention, um, take uh, any frequency and apply it to that particular problem. And that sound and frequency just has this way of when sounds are harmonic, they just have a way of reordering us, I believe, on a cellular level and changing our thoughts, changing our uh, frequency. So potentially healing really any problem, either physical or mental, just depending on uh, how we approach it and what the intention is. I mean, people talk about a lot of different frequencies as being like healing in, in certain ways, such as like the Schumann resonance of the planet or 432 hertz versus like 440 and things like this. And, you know, I do think that there is something to all of that. However, I definitely agree with Seth that a lot of it is intentional and you know what kind of vibration you create in in that sense and that the intention is something that you know everyone in a group or everyone experiencing a sound bath can entrain to um but yeah like the schumann resonance you know <laughs> if we all align to the resonance of the planet um a lot of people use that as a baseline frequency to uh, harmonize with or to um you know align with and related to this too is the um, there's a, uh, a field called binaural beats that mm -hmm. is a, a part of sound healing. That what it is um, what, when they look at uh, the EEG uh, from the brain, listening to two different sounds. If if the brain hears a sound in the left ear and a sound in the right ear, it will subtract the the two frequencies and it will create a phantom tone of that difference in the mind. And so. There's these brainwave states that correspond to deep sleep and meditation called, you know, delta waves, alpha waves, gamma waves, beta waves, that these range between, you know, as little as 0.1 hertz up to about 30 hertz. And this, this would represent those brain states that we experience during sleep, during meditation. And so binaural beats is actually the field of we actually can create that phantom tone to replicate, for example, the alpha wave or beta wave that would only be one or two hertz in frequency, not essentially inaudible, but by this technique of uh, creating the phantom tone in the mind can actually create that one or two hertz signal uh, when you listen on headphones and then can help the listener actually enter into those kinds of deep relaxation states that are, uh, resemble higher meditation. So that would be one example though, where it's very much specifically about generating a one hertz or two hertz or a different frequency of a binaural beat to actually entrain the brain into a state to resemble sleep or meditation. Wow. <laughs> You're blowing my mind. <laughs> You're blowing my mind. <laughs> I'm like, okay, wait. So I, I have become flabbergasted here because I kind of understood what you were saying, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what this sounds like is when you're reading, because I do this a lot, I'll read or I'll write and I'll skip a word but I know that I, I heard me say it or heard me do it, yeah. but I didn't write it down, right? So that's pretty intriguing because I've always, I shouldn't say always, but I have, I have tremendous trouble sleeping, relaxing. Uh, it, it goes with the, the spectrum of symptoms with all my diagnoses and problems and stuff. So after the years and years and years and years and years and years of therapy and Applied Western medicine and meditation, transcendental meditation. I think the the world is uh, word is what it was called. Mindfulness, you know, all these great practices. I've always gone back to music. I've I I'm gonna like as soon as we're done talking, I'm gonna look up binaural beats. So I'm gonna check out more of your your music because it's fascinating to me because music takes you to a place. Like if I put on a song, uh, me and my wife love listening to just just so many different types of music. Uh, one of my favorite songs right now is Palco. Um, I'm going to mess up the gentleman's name, but the song is Palco, and it's a Portuguese song by, from Brazil. And just the feeling and the sensation and the tonality of the music, it's just so uplifting and vibing. And I, I, I play it, of course, on long trips or when I'm having a bad day. But then I also go to things like Pantera, 
Walk. You know, one of one of a vulgar displays of power. Or vulgar display of power is one of my favorite albums. And when you listen to either or, for me, I feel a sensation of just happiness. Uh, I'm resonating. You know, I'm I'm present. Right. I uh, I love dancing growing up. I still love dancing. I, I'll be out in the garage dancing my ass off and my wife comes out. What are you doing? I'm like, I'm just I'm just doing it. I'm trying I'm trying to lose some weight as well as enjoy my life, right? And uh, music has a has a very special place in my heart. So learning about that and just how well you understand that material, I'm just again taken aback and impressed by it because it seems like you've taken not only your your work experience and the creative experience of the past uh, into this new, I wish shouldn't say new, but this this developing venture of yours, especially with what you have going on in Nova Scotia and building up this place to just bring that to light and bring that to other people and have that experienced. It's it's amazing. Like I'm excited and stoked to hear and just see more about it. Now you did mention something. Really quickly, Jen, or Jenny, I'm sorry. I wanted to, uh, it's my sister's name, by the way. That's why I go back to Jen. I want to say Jen, Jen. Like, I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> so I was reading a bit on energy because we were talking about energy. We're talking about music. We're talking about getting better. You know, I'm working on sleep, all that good stuff, working on exercise. Now, I've noticed that you have an energy for life, uh, life coaching. Um, what is what is that about, and how does one get involved, and what does it do w- when when you're bringing together all these different convincing parts? Like, I clearly clearly I I can connect some dots, but I'd really like to hear it from you. What is that, and and what type of relationship does this music venture create with that? Yeah, so I just did the six month certification with our teacher that we had met initially back in uh, 2012, the energy medicine healer, Lisa Ishwari Murphy. She's incredible. So she had this um, in person and online course, and this is a program she's really passionate about and I would say it's really the basis of all of her work you know both her sound baths uh, for groups and also in her private sessions um, where she works with people over time and really at the core of it is this idea of rhythmic entrainment so every session usually starts with a drum beat nothing complicated just very simple and so she starts you know beating the drum and then she's speaking as the drum is playing and basically the rhythm of her voice starts becoming in sync with the drum and starts creating this um, just calming rhythmic atmosphere through which you can bring the client into a state of ease and a state of harmony so that they are more open to not only communicate why they're there, but also to receive any vibrational healing and to essentially receive, um, you know, the sound frequencies in the most optimal way possible. So part of it's almost like a coaching therapy session uh, with a meditation using this rhythm. And then, you know, part of the session can go into, um, you know, sound healing instruments of, of different sorts, depending on what the person needs. And then usually Lisa will work with these people, um, clients over time, you know, a certainly one session could be really helpful, but a lot of times if, especially if someone's working through something, um, you know, that's not only emotional in nature, but physical in nature, for example, like you have MS, she actually has had a number of clients who have had MS, who have no symptoms at all anymore, after sort of going through this, this kind of healing. So I'm starting to do this with clients myself, I think it's a, you know, really innovative approach, because it's not just life coaching, and it's not just sound healing, it's just kind of bringing them both together with a focus on rhythm. That's gorgeous. I I definitely love that because being supportive, <laughs> I have the saying, my wife's going to kill me. She's like, I can't believe you'd say it. I say it all the time. And it's applying therapies daily and better days equal better days. I'm sorry, better ways equal better days. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> better ways equal better days. 
And having a support system, whether it be a, a life coach, whether it be a coach in general, uh, whether it be a support system, like my wife is my caregiver. She's me and her have been on a program with the VA uh, since 2014, where I was just completely absorbed and distraught and uh, succumbed to my injuries. Needless to say, it's been years. It's been nearly 10 years of just continuous you know, treatment and therapy and understanding and growing. And like you were saying, the openness and willingness to seek that type of coaching and being coachable is, is profoundly important to the effect and affect of a patient or a client mm-hmm. or a person going through such a horrible condition like MS, which is excruciatingly painful. There's a lot of different conditions that, you know, we could learn to be a little bit more empathetic towards because on the surface, we may not see that. And I'm, I'm one of those first people that would be, I prefer to smile. I don't want to let anybody know anything's going on. I, you know, I, I'm a man, et cetera, et cetera. The ego comes in, but doing the work and learning from the past 10 years, I've learned that the willingness to be open and connect with others and to learn and just be coachable, you know, take those steps, whether they're big steps or small steps, but having a good sense of reinforcement, uh, encouragement and empathy from somebody like yourself. It's just really beautiful that you're doing that because as a, as a personal experience, having that with my wife and having that with my support system, I could see how important it is to integrate because clearly, you know, people that are interested in in, in healing baths, healing sound baths or healing music or life coaching. And I'm going to tap on this next subject, which is really interesting for me. Um, It's important and it's super, it's super cool because it's the answer to a lot of problems that we're seeing. Not everybody's going to be able to reach out when they're in the dark, right? They're not going to be able to reach out when they're in the dumps. But having that sense of safe and accepting and warmth that you have, and I'm just going to say that because, you know, meeting you for the first time, I'm like, yeah, I can definitely see sitting down and being really bluntly honest and open, having some breakthroughs, you know, going through some kind of a sound bath and all this interesting stuff, life coaching. I can see how that would be excruciatingly beneficial for anybody. So if you're listening and you guys are interested in Jenny, uh, I would really like to know how would we connect for that life coaching type of experience with you? Yeah, so it's on our website, which is Dynasty Electric, spelled with a K at the end, dot com. And it's just under services. So I offer that. And I also, I'm also an astrologer and I do Oracle card readings as well. That's exactly what I wanted to touch on next. Uh, Of course, I love plugging and promoting people's works and services and crafts and all the great stuff. That's the reason why I really like hitting on the professionalism of your, your music creation and just, just overall image of sound. And it sounds like you guys have a plethora of different musicalities that you could bring into any kind of soundscape. But what is that? What is astrology and oracle reading? I'm sorry if I messed up. <laughs> or, oracle cards is related to tarot. It's just using, you know, archetypes sometimes ancient archetypes, just archetypes of the human experience to help uh, give a little bit deeper information into what someone might be navigating. So you could have just a conversation and give, you know, intuitive insights, but then picking a card that's an archetype of something in particular can help you to go deeper with that person and so that they can have some aha moments and maybe realize something they didn't see previously. So there, it's really, there's a lot of psychology to it. I also, you know, in psychology, they'll have you look which photograph uh, resonates with you the most and it'll mean something in particular. I feel like it's kind of like that. You know, I don't use it as like a predictive modality and say for sure this, this or this is happening. I more look at the energies that you're navigating at any time and what could possibly unfold based on what's happening. That's so awesome. the astrology, thank you. <laughs> and the astrology is just something I've always been interested in um, for many years. I studied it years ago, and it's been a really nice um, 
you know, connection with, with our sound baths on YouTube. It's been a way to sort of put the energy out there that, okay, this is for the full moon. This is for the new moon. And each of those moons, you know, fall in different signs. They have different energies and it gives us sort of a focal point to create music around in a sense. That's beautiful. Now incorporating all of that, that subject matter with, with you and Seth, when you sit down because we did cover it's more it's based improvisational but when you're actually in that moment do you find all these influences kind of pulling you into creation which you kind of touched a bit about when you guys went to Woodstock you were developing sound creation and now what you have going on in Nova Scotia but how do you when you sit down and you feel what is the process of that creation and when you're turning around, of course, I always call audio product, just just habits, right? It, when you're turning around that product for distribution, how do you go to the editing? Ba- do you edit? Is there a workflow or process to this beyond that? Yeah, thank you for those questions. To, to answer the first one, I agree with Seth. I think, you know, your environment has a lot to do with it. So some of the lyrical songs we're working on right now one is called wild flowers and there's a field of wild flowers right outside our window one is called oceans of time and we're looking at the ocean you know so i i definitely think you know what's coming into our aware awareness has a lot to do with the environment which is which is why we like exploring a lot of different environments because new perspectives come in that way Um, So I think that's part of it. Obviously, all of the experience of my life leading up to now, I'm sure is in the subconscious somewhere as well. Um, But I think the more that you travel and open yourself up to new experiences, the uh, new ideas or new ways of looking at old ideas come in. That's awesome. Usually we'll we'll lay down uh, musically a a, kind of a map of a performance of a sound bath. So we kind of have sort of territories that we're going to be exploring and so and those would represent kind of modes or keys in music and so it'd be like we're going to move from c major to f major and g major and then into a minor and these would kind of be like if we were in a, a rock song you might actually experience all four chords like within a few bars but in the sound bath what we do is we'll stretch out those modes and those keys over a course of 30 to 60 minutes and so we'll really explore each chord and each part uh, deeply. Um, and back to improvisation again, there's always a, um, an element of improvisation in our work because I think it, it's what brings you into the moment. It brings you into the now. And so it's a really powerful way of giving it that authenticity of, it's not just like it was all perfectly figured out in advance. It was in that moment, that was what felt right at that, that time to record. And so uh, then after we record that improvisation layer of live performance, then we take all that data and uh, sculpt it into that final product uh, of the YouTube video and albums. And um, so it it goes through a a whole step of first uh, sort of mapping everything out and what areas we want to kind of work on musically and also with the chakras and uh, what might be going on in the world too and what we think listeners might really be needing at any certain time. Uh, also with the sound bath too I think we seek to really kind of blend all of the tones together in a way so that there's this seamless experience and there's nothing in particular that's pulling you out of whatever inner journey or whatever experience of relaxation you're having so with the vocals for example I really try to just almost blend in like a singing bowl so that you're hearing it, but it's not like, oh, all of a sudden here's some vocals. It's like they're just kind of coming in and moving out. That's solid. <laughs> like I, I, I have hung out with a lot of musicians and I always appreciate the breakdown of not only influence, but construction of, of their art, right? It'd be like sitting down with Da Vinci and going like, hey, how'd you, what was that? Okay, that's why you did that. Um, I really vibe off of that because I really, I can sense the, the jazz musician from Seth, from Seth very much and the whole intuitiveness and just being in the moment and bringing that out. And, you know, if you flub, it's not a flub, it's an accent, right? (laughs) And going with the flow, you know, making it a thing. 
and giving it that flavor and bringing out your true selves to it. So to move it on, uh, to wrap it up a bit as well, what is next for Dynasty Electric? And then what is next for you as individuals with all the amazing things you have going on? Of course, with the foundation that you have, or I should say the, the project that you're building out in Nova Scotia, as well as the music that you've also previously created for entertainment and the professional world. To kind of sum it up, what is next for, for all y'all? Well, uh, as you were mentioning, you were checking out our latest album, which it's called uh, Journey to Tranquility. And so that just dropped on Spotify and Apple Music and on the different streaming services. And that album is actually, it kind of mirrors our journey over the last couple of years from LA out here to Nova Scotia, because the earlier tracks on the record were made out in Los Angeles a couple of years ago. And the most recent ones were made here in Nova Scotia. Uh, and then just exploring a lot of actually what we talked about today of uh, there's some of Jenny's improvisational singing on the record. There's some of the binaural beats work that I was talking about with alpha waves and beta waves. Uh, and just kind of exploring this, these different um, uh, musical and spiritual wellness areas that have been fascinating us for the last couple of years. And, and then we're planning on going on the road for a, a, an actual journey um, back out to Los Angeles this winter to do a series of performances um, and we'll be looking to pick up different sound bath performances along the way uh, throughout the United States. Amazing. Amazing. That is inspiring and motivational. It's empowering. Like it is really empowering to, to hear that you've had such a tremendous amount of experiences between the both of you. You had created a vision and, and a pathway to bringing this, this type of healing to people and now to bring it into the live realm of, I love tours. I love live music. Of course, you know, I think that, I think that's where everybody wants to be is actually back to experiencing each other, experiencing life and, and just getting back to living. You know what I mean? Like I know everybody knows the words I want to say for the past two, three years that, well, I should say three years of everything in the world, quote unquote, that's been going on. And even now, you know, what's going on God, everything that's going on, right? Like the hurricane that's about to hit us. We're like, what? What do you mean it yeah. might touch down in LA? <laughs> right? This hasn't happened yeah. since 1939, bud. But a lot of things go on in the world. And to provide something, a course of, of art, right? But of value that provides people the opportunity to just center and ground and come back to experiencing this life that we have to share because life is short and let's make it a beautiful one. Right. I really, really enjoy that. So to wrap it up, do you guys have any shout outs, either one, Jenny or Seth, any special comments, anything that I may have missed? Well, just to mention Seal Harbor Sanctuary, which we've been talking about here in Nova Scotia, we're actually hosting our first retreat in October, which is a long weekend retreat called the Dream Oracle Retreat. We're partnering with this um, intuitive medium. So we're going to do some dream workshops and some sound baths and mediumship and forest bathing and it uh, should be a really beautiful uh, weekend. So we're excited to really move this project forward and to start, you know, hosting retreats here. And also, I'm really excited to reconnect um, with our community out in LA and start doing more live sound baths out there. And also, we recently had some music in a film, and I would love to do more of that as well. Oh, beautiful. What film? It's called Most Guys Are Losers. <laughs> it's it's a, about this dad that... <laughs> it's a rom-com. It's a rom-com. You can stream it on Amazon, right? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Yeah. And so our song Star and a song called Wild Animal were licensed for the film. And we also did a cover of Be My Baby by, the, by Ronnie and the Ronettes for the end of the film. And there's like, you know, a, a really nice cast in the film, Mira Sorvina. And her late father is also in it. Um, uh, Andrew Buckley is that, or Andy Buckley, right? Andrew, Andy Buckley is also in it as well. But it's a good, it's a cute little rom com. So we were super excited to be a part of that, and it would be so nice to do some more um, uh, film scoring and licensing. I was just about to say, film scoring is is a completely different experience, and like mm. in the audio world, it it. 
uh, Hans Zimmer comes up like in every oh, yeah. every single dynamic of conversation with film scoring, right? Orchestrational. It's a beautiful realm of creation. That is amazing to have accomplished that. And to the both of you, I, I am just like awestruck, impressed, and humbled to have you on today and to be able to discuss these opportunities to be involved. Of course, with the retreat coming up in October, we'll be sure to share the links uh, to get all those links. And actually, is there uh, links that we could pitch here and promote, plug all the social media stuff? Everything is Dynasty Electric, but there's a K at the end. So... YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> TikTok, Spotify. Spotify, Apple Music, all of that. It just has Dynasty Electric with a K at the end. Awesome. Dynasty Electric. And I believe it's DynastyElectric.com with a K at the end of Electric. That is beautiful. Uh, thank you, both of you, uh, for coming on today. I really appreciate your time. Um, and if you have any last words... No, that's not really a good way of saying that. (laughs) (laughs) My last words are, thank you so much, beautiful people. Sending all of our love from out here in Nova Scotia. Thank you so much for listening. And what an honor to talk with you all. We hope to be in San Diego County um, early to later, maybe later this year or early next year. And it is. Hello. Why